Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last episode, we joined Cortac, and we completed the first mission for them, finding out what happened to we all. Uh, wow, with Raul. There we go. Raul. <laughs> we're now back here, and we're going to go ahead and turn it in this quest and see if the gentleman has any other work for us. Yep, that's what we're doing. And I think I did some selling and so on off screen. Yes, I did. Awesome. All right. Hello, Joseph. Garrett, it's a pleasure to see you, as always. I found Raul. I see. Where is he? What happened to him? I found his corpse in a facility of sorts in the northern section of the sewers. He seems to have been killed by a cannibal who didn't get the chance to eat him yet. That must have been a gruesome death. Sadly, despite our best efforts, Core City still hides these demented, twisted freaks under the rug. On the other hand, if it was the Faceless that got to him, maybe his fate would have been even worse. Now tell me, did Raoul have any documents on him? I found nothing. No matter then. You've done what was asked of you, so it's time for you to receive your first payment. Here are some Charons, and a device I think you'll find quite useful. Hands you 300 Charons and an energy shield emitter. You deliver, I can say. I have more work for you. I'm ready for my next task. This one is very serious, Agent. We've discovered that our prototype ICPD has been stolen from one of our labs, and one of our employees, Lubin Greenhorn, is a prime suspect in this matter, I can say. He vanished around the time the device disappeared, and he is one of the rare people who had easy access to the device. We're searching the company grounds as well as the whole residential district, including his home of course, but unfortunately we still haven't been able to track him down. We tried keeping this whole situation quiet, but I fear we have now no other options but to pull all our resources for this one. That's where you come in. I want you to join the search for the device. While the device is of the utmost priority, Lubin himself should be brought in for questioning as well. However, should he resist, you are free to neutralize him. One more thing, Garrett. Lubin is... Lubin, as most of his clearance, has had an intradermal chip planted in his arm. So take this tracker. The chip is difficult to safely remove, but desperate times call for desperate measures, so expect everything. ICPD must be returned to Cortec. I repeat that one final time. Otherwise, it might fall into the wrong hands. What is ICPD? It stands for Intercranial Pressure Destabilizer. It is a prototype device we've been developing at the moment. It has a rounded shape with four small legs at the bottom and a protruding vertical piece at the top. I understand it is a bit difficult to describe, but you will see easily when you see, you will recognize it easily when you see it. it. Sounds like something that blows someone's head up. The rest is classified. Who is Lubin and why would he steal this device? He was a member of our internal security forces, somewhat dependable enough to have access to even the most restricted areas of this building. Not so much anymore, I can say. No one has any proof of his motives yet. We have some suspicions, but we'll set our speculations aside. Retrieval of the device is our top priority, so that is where our focus should lie, Garrett. Alright, take care, Joseph. Okay, we have a strange device now. Where is this thing? It's probably a quest item. Here it is. A device used to track down tagged Cortec employees. The signal's coming from somewhere far below. Oh, maybe he's in the sewer system. Alright, well, let's go ahead and... Actually, let's, let's explore another segment of this area, since we have not yet explored all of it. And then we'll go back down to, uh, to the sewer system. He's probably down there, I would imagine. Praetorian Security might have the numbers, but we have the tech. Indeed. Let's see that tech, sir. I wouldn't mind seeing what's in your pockets. A fusion cell, 22 Charons. Let's grab the fusion cell off of him. 
The faceless are creatures twisted by their addiction to technology. Their doom is imminent. Hello, Mr. Missionary. What do you have on you? Adrenaline shot blueprint. We'll grab that. Why not? We'll also take your 22 channels. Thank you, sir, very much for your help. This is the building the Chorts are currently using for their uh, groups and get-togethers. Norman, gentlemen, is teach me. Adventang. How do you does? Gah! Wants an eerie sip. A funny gag? What on earth is your problem, sir? Let's uh, take a single Stygian coin. And then search this sentinel. He's got a JKK pen, which we already took. We'll take his digging coins as well. Ah, Norman. Let's talk to good old Norman. Actually, first let's search Norman before I forget to search Norman. And then we'll talk to him. Norman's got 105 stigging coins. We'll take those. Thank you, Norman. You come up to an average height blonde man holding a real book in his hand, reading it quietly. He is dressed in a stylish, high cost suit while wearing equally fashionable shoes, all free of even a speck of dust. Meanwhile, his physique is as unimpressive as his geld hair, seeing that an average South Underrailer can break him in two without breaking a sweat. He closes the book, takes a brief look at you, and begins the conversation with an entirely unique greeting. Can Ho, Approacher! Can Ho! A joyful smile materializes on his face. Ah, finally someone who is not an uncultured swine. You speak Advatung, yes? You speakish Advatung, ya? Yeah? Yay? Uh, nah, I just repeated what you said. Gah! I see you're one of the uneducated ones, which doesn't flummox me one bit, considering our current location. This is Core City, after all. No matter, since you're already here, I might as well educate you, if only a bit. Hear me. The language you witnessed me using is called Avatung. And it is a contemporary, modernized, and improved version of the language most of us use, common tongue, as I will refer to it from now on. For, you see, I was feeling indisposed and exhausted of all the inconsistencies and... How do I express myself? Unnaturalness of common tongue. Thus, I, Professor Norman Hack of the University of Dees, one day made a conscious decision to liberate some of my time, sit down and do my best to... I can't pronounce this word... I'm a lo I can't pronounce it. The stale mess into one endearing and beautiful language. Much pretty tongue. It resembles the common tongue, true, but only to a minuscule degree. For instance, common tongue was a language dominated by exceptions to rules, relying on memorizing pho uh, phonic patterns in order to maintain proper pronunciation. Strict sentence structure. I could go on and on. All this has been evicted in Avatar. For a whole language has been standardized and tuned toward absolute consistency in every aspect imaginable, creating a clearer, more natural, linguinal experience, free of ambiguity. Much pretty. There is so much more to speak of it, but first I'd like for you to tell me why you're here and what you want from me. I notice the guy outside also speaks Avatar. Ah, yay! Rick Gentleman. He's my student, and a bright young man, I must say. I started teaching him shortly after I had arrived in Court City. I rented this, uh... How do you refer to it without making it seem better than it actually is? Space here, and put it up an Avatung course ad. Rick Gentleman was the first one to respond to the ad. He was the only one to respond to the ad. He clearly realized the importance of Avatung, unlike the other denizens of this linguistic cesspit. I mean, even despite my disapproval of common tongue, the things I've heard here made my ears bleed and my mind wail in agony. Being hammered in the head with hardcore and dominating every two seconds is only the beginning of the story. Pipe worker? Atrocity! Advatung is a... Oh wait, Advatung? I thought it was Advatung. Is an official language of... Well, even a station, let alone a region, will have to wait. However, I hope that the goal will be achieved one day. If that means teaching one student at a time, then I better persevere. What can you tell me about Core City? It's just like most of South Underrail stations. Linguistically perverted to the point of creating an impression that commoners who live here are struggling with their very own language. 
and I thought Kamatong in its untainted form was apparent enough. I just dread that one day the way commoners converse here won't slither into my own speaking in some perfidious way. Indeed, coming here was a much mind clonking experience. If it wasn't for my student, I would have gone insane listening to those JKK workers discussing their trims and other menial things. Oh, well, tell me about uh, JKK. JKK. As soon as, my, as soon as I open my doors, I'm greeted by the sight of their headquarters. They broadcast that perfectly dreadful arena, feeding it to the unwashed masses. On top of it, they organize betting to further relieve the poor creatures already barren pockets. Their heads are already desolate, so why not their pockets too? I better not have anything to do with JKK. Do, do not do. And I have no better opinion of Cortec or Praetorian security for that matter. Primitive lot. I said, so then you're not a fan of the arena. Yeah, that buffoonery? Buffoon so hard. Please, I do not wish to speak about it. The arena is the sort of thing that appeals only to the most primitive southerners, which is the majority. Can you teach me a few Avatung phrases? You wish to learn a few phrases? Wonderful! It is my aim to proliferate the number of Advatung speakers, as you may have already deduced. What phrases are you interested in? Hello. That's an easy one. It's Can Ho. You even heard me say that when we met. Be careful. A in can is pronounced like a A in cargo. Oh, car? Carn? Wait. Car. <laughs> How do you say that? Uh, car, carn? No, car, card. Car, there's no R in it though. I can't do it. I am physically unable to say hello in Avatug. How about goodbye? Ah, it's a very simple word. Gonho. It's quite similar to Kanho. Naturally, you should also use a more complicated phrase like observant you Sokolos which is most similar to see you around, or you could even say gagan, which is unique to Avatar. It's a word that expresses a happy goodbye. Gagan. <laughs> um, how about uh, good job? You mean with Avatar? Oh, thank you. It, it's true. I rarely get the, the recognition. Truth is, truth is. Oh, you mean you, you want me to... God, ah, sorry. Uh, good job is good work on. Rat hound. <laughs> yep. Um, Squix says much. Disgusting animals. Unitrative, yay. Uh, how about you ugly bastard? Nay, nay, nay. Why use such harsh language? Avatar is meant to be beautiful and amiable. Well... Technically, you could say you unattractive Shlomor, but please do avoid unpleasantries. How about I'm going to pulverize your bones and smash your skull to tiny bits? Please don't. Uh, I mean, uh, why such a hateful language? I don't even. I don't think I even have a word for pulverize, but I'll give it my best to appease your hunger for violent language. I is will much broke your watastrick and boom your mind kanta to so a hard recept totos. So violent. Jazzuz. <laughs> Enough of this, let's talk about something else. Yay? Tell me about the Ogliarchy. I haven't personally met the few that then rule. The Ogliarchs, that is. My information on them is limited, I'm afraid. But my personal experience, mostly from observation, but also from other unfortunate incidents, dictates that I can only draw a single conclusion, which is that they are managing the city in a selfish, incompetent, and rather oppressive manner. Gah, at least no one disturbs me anymore. If we ignore the environment itself, that is. Alright, take care, Norman. In Avatung, it is observant to Soklus, Norman gentlemen. Remember that, please. To my recollection, Avatung is not used anywhere in the game other than right there. It's just a bit of lore and or some funny talking you can do for a little bit. Hello, 21 bucks. You know what we're here for, guys, Mr. Sluggers. We're here for your pants pockets. We're sticking our hands in them. That's not creepy at all. Got some more sticking coins. 
We want all this. We want all of it. Uh, we'll take the electronic repair kit. That gentleman, three bottles, a morphing shot. I think we already picked all the people's pockets who were inside this building. Let's try this technician really quick. And then I guess we'll stop in and talk to the uh, tort members as well while we're here. Ooh, he's got a shield bitter emit base and an advanced electronic repair kit. We'll grab both of those. All right, let's see who's here today. Minister Percival. Hello, good sir. This is, I'm not ignoring you, but I really want to see your friends first. And this gentleman has... Some okay black cloth. Well, we can find better. Let's take the sticking coins off of him. Good. Let's go over here and check this gentleman out as well, or lady. Ooh, lots of chemicals. I think we want, we'll take the cash, and we'll take Mido Salam from him. And this guy looks really important. Well, look how buff this guy is. Eye of Chort. This medallion is generally worn by military personnel of the Institute of Chort. We'll take that. Let's um. Let's see if we're able actually able to pick. Uh, um, sorry, get past the guards. Nope. That's not going to work. Not going to work at all. We don't have the stealth that we require. Hello, Minister Percival. You find yourself in front of a man wearing beautifully ornamented robes. He stands tall and confident, with a chiseled face and a radiant green eyes most would kill for. What is most striking about him is, is, is his unusual stare. It appears to be constant, never changing, neutral, but every time you see it, you perceive it in a different manner. One moment it strikes you as benevolent, wise, even paternal. The other, it makes you feel exposed and apprehensive. He projects his voice without effort and speaks in a calm, non-rushed manner with a slight drag at the end of each sentence. Chort is evolution, brother. I am Minister Percival, and I am a member of the Institute of Chort. Fear us not, for we mean no harm, even though our appearance might suggest otherwise. I try not to have any prejudice based on appearance. Prejudice is destructive to humans, and I'm glad you haven't fallen into that trap. Of course, if what you say is... true. Still, one can't fail to acknowledge the potential deetering nature of our clothing. Our uniforms are usually described as disgusting or creepy, but as I've said, prejudice can rob someone of... wisdom. On the other hand, we have an unmistakable and distinct appearance, something we embrace to symbolize the regenerative cycle of Chort itself. Now it lies in deep caverns, formless, rebuilding itself. Once ready, it will manifest into a new, improved being, adapted to this world. Our robes honor this alteration, for we too are undergoing change. And once the robes are removed, we will reveal our new, improved form. Sounds interesting. What can you tell me about this Institute of Chort you belong to? Institute of Chort is an institution devoted to Chortism and was founded by Aiden, who first discovered Chort nearly a century ago. Chortism is an ideology centered around Chort, a being that possesses and brings us immense knowledge and is the key to advancing, evolving the human race to new heights. Literally. He smiles. Scientific investigation lies behind everything we do. We study the creature and its complete genetic makeup and learn from it. Then we apply the knowledge in... Practice. I'm not so sure about this, but please continue. Tickled your imagination. Good. 
Tort exists as a physical being, observable, tangible, but not yet able to fully communicate with us in its current state. But it gifted us with its flesh, and through scientific investigation, as I've already mentioned, we discovered that it was previously thought to be junk DNA actually contained a genetic code that serves as sort of, uh, backup for the creature. The explanation is lengthy, it requires a bit of time, and will. It sounds like Chort is a... a Shagath? A creature able to change its shape? Consisting just of various forms of DNA, a massive blob, maybe of some sort, but able to take certain shapes or forms, and or adjust or manipulate itself to have certain characteristics. And these people are studying it, or nor communicating with it, and learning from it. That's fascinating. Glad you're finding it interesting. You know what? We hold lectures about Tortism here in Core City. If you want to learn more, come and attend one of these lectures. I think that's a more effective way to comprehend the subject. Prove it. He smiles. Have you perhaps met Professor Norman Hack? Indeed I have. Unfortunately. In my opinion, that man is a pseudo-intellectual. While he might possess certain knowledge, I can't dispute that. His arrogance is the only cause for creation of that abominable language he calls Advatung. According to his own words, Advatung is supposed to be a... linguistic paradise. Yet it's a mockery. A de-evolution. Please, just observe the construction, the pronunciation. It pains me to even think of it. Have you been to the Harcrystity Bar? I haven't really personally been to this place, but some of my brothers and sisters have. It seems very... devolved. They do it mostly to discuss tortism with as many people as possible. Which is understandable, due to the popularity of it. What I found peculiar, though, is the missionaries absorbed several local terms there. For example, I've heard phrases like, That's freaking hardcore, or zone out, being uttered by a worrying number of... tortists on numerous occasions. If this trend continues, a certain form of intervention might be... necessary. You understand Core City slang sounds very unfitting for a tortist. What can you tell me about the Ogliarchy? The Ogliarchs allowed us to be here under their protection. We are allowed to propagate knowledge uninterrupted. While there are certain matters regarding them which can be commented on, I'd rather avoid doing so. It would be rude to my hosts. Our hosts, in my opinion. Take care, Minister. Chort guides you on your travels. We'll come back to him later and attend one of the meetings and see what gets talked about there. Right now, though, I think as Conan the Barbarian had stated so eloquently once, ENOUGH TALK! I think it's time to go exploring and or begin killing some things. So let's get to it. So let's go down to the docks. And let's use this device again. Somewhere above. Okay, so he's not in they're not in the docks. Let's go to the commons area. To the north. That's gonna be in this direction. He might be in drop zone. Let's head this way. Let's also quick save really quick. Quick save really quick. Yep, I totally said that. So, if he was north of that location, then we need to go probably... Uh, probably here?
signal is coming from somewhere nearby. Okay, then. Oh, maybe he's in, like, a place like that. They, they might have spawned him in his home. Yep, he probably has to be in this location. The terrified man instantly points a gun at you. Albeit it took him one extra second to actually aim the barrel at your head due to his shaking hands. He eyes you for a moment, then speaks to you in trembling, tense voice. Don't move a muscle, or I'll blow your face to pieces! You hear me scum back to pieces! Calm down, man. I only want to ask you some questions. Don't you calm me down, you scum! I know who sent you, I... He falls silent. That's right. Cortex sent me to get the device you stole. Cortex! How... How'd you find me so fast? I thought... I took care of the... Wait, 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 wait. Listen to me. I don't have the device anymore, I swear. I mean, I don't... Damn it! Just... Just make way or I'll shoot you, I swear. I'm not giving you another warning. I'll let you go if you give me the device. I don't have it anymore. I got intercepted on my way through the drop zone. Some hardcore looking zoner with three chicks robbed me. Damn it! And to think it was a better idea to go through that wretched slum. I had no choice. It was either my head or the ICPD. Zoner with three chicks. Yeah, some zoner gang. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know that area well, so I can't tell you exactly where to find them. I remember seeing some large slanted roofs near where they stopped me. I don't know. Damn it! Now I'm out of here. Let me pass or I swear this will turn ugly. Thanks for the information, but you're still coming with me. No, I'm not! Sorry, Lubin. A decent weapon. Armor's good as well. And that sucks. We got almost no information from him. Three checks. Well, they're not here. Maybe we should have been so fast on the killing part. Well, we'll walk around, see if we can find out an area that he that might be that might hold those people. Not this area. Let's try going this way. No, it's not these guys either. Just zoners. Crap, I have no clue where this could where this could be. Well, let's let's investigate a few areas. We'll see if we notice like another battle that has spawned in the meantime. If we know that it was somewhere in the slums. Oh hello! Sletvana. We can talk to her. Or we can just start the battle. Enough talk. I think we'll just end this if we can.
Alright, miss. Let's see if you have it on you. Sorry about that. We know that there's three others around here somewhere. Two throwing nets. A decent crossbow. Some shock MK2 shock bolts. The boots are not worth it. That's not worth it. We'll grab some bolts as well from her. Let's go ahead and leave a trap here. It looks like this gentleman at least is melee. We'll also go ahead and move you here. And let's go ahead and kill them all. That kind of sucked. Let's move away. Ah, he actually saw the bear trap and decided not to step into it. Hello, Princella. Oh, what the heck? I did not realize he could walk past that. That sucks for me. We took a bunch of damage there. Let's heal ourselves. Use uncanny dodge. And get some more distance. Hello, Mr. Fatigued. Hello, Tina. How are you doing? Let's try killing you really quick, or stunning you at least. Nice. Excellent kill. I don't feel like being hit by this guy. Let's move over here. Duff, you're almost dead. Good work, Trimus. Good work. There's a device! ICPD. You have no idea what all the different buttons on this thing do. The big one seems very tempting, but then again, maybe it's better not to touch it. That wasn't so bad. Oh, we raised our Slavonis corpse. Let's take that trap. Don't want anyone else getting damaged by it. That sucked. I mean, well, not really, but we won. It wasn't that difficult at all, actually, but still. And Princella, what do you have on you? A pistol. Armor is useless. Bullets, we'll take those. And where's Tina's corpse? Oh, here she, here she is. Uh, we can go ahead and just scrap that. All right, not bad. That was a piece of cake, actually. Let's look at our equipment really quick. This could you probably use a repair. Not bad. Efficient. Very efficient. Good work, Garrett. Ah, there's John the Beautiful. Hey, John. We'll talk to you later, sir. I feel kind of bad about killing the other guy. He just could, he just could have told everyone what happened. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a lot of people overreact. Then again, I guess if you're working for working for Cortec, I guess he what? He's ambushed by three people. He has to give up the item, or feels forced to do so. Ah, it doesn't matter now. Let's go ahead and uh, visit our storage barrels. We'll drop this stuff off there. Technically, we didn't lie. We told him, give us the item, and he couldn't. 
And then we said, you're coming with us, then. And he's like, nope. Wait, hold on. I walked right past the barrels! I walked right past them! <laughs> I'm so used to just doing that. Alright. Uh, while I do some inventory management off screen, everyone, I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. All done. Made about 100 credits selling those bullets to Garcia. And now let's go ahead and turn this quest into to court tech. I think you're going to be happy that the gentleman is dead. Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't have killed him. <laughs> I guess we'll find out soon enough, Tim. <laughs> well, we could always lie and say we had to defend ourselves. Actually, that's not that's not untrue, since he oh, since he threatened them to kill us instead of going back to Cortec. I don't know why though. He just wasn't like, "Can you help me get it back?" Rather than panic the way he did. Ah, poor guy, sitting in his room with a sniper rifle, just waiting for that door to open. And then when it does, we interrupt him and talk to him. And then we beat him on initiative and then slaughter him. Garrett, it is a pleasure to see you as always. I have the ICPD. Harlan smiles, this time with such delight it seems almost out of place. Perfect. You delivered again. I can say. And I am becoming more and more certain that we have made the right choice by accepting you as our employee. And Lubin? What of him? Dead. I see. I guess you had no choice. Here's your payment. You are shaping up to be a valuable asset, I can say. Good work, Garrett. I think the equipment provided with the payment will be satisfactory. He has you 400 charons and an energy pistol. Now I believe there is a, a communicator attached to his belt, rings, and flashes bright red, interrupting his sentence. Uh, would you excuse me for a second? This seems important. Harlan responds to the call, carefully listening to the anxious voice speaking to him. The more he listens, the more his expression darkens. Then you hear the loud banging of numerous footsteps as they move down the, the hallway. After several minutes of silence, Harlan answers with a simple, I understand, and turns to you, his expression still worried. We have an emergency. One of our warehouses is under attack. We don't know who's behind it. Maybe it's the Faceless. Maybe... Just go there and help our forces repel the attackers. The warehouse is located in the city, just west from the main city entrance. Expect anything, Garrett. If you need to arm yourself, do so quickly, for every second counts. Now go. There's no time to lose. Agent Henderson and her men will meet you there. Alright, well, let's contribute to the battle then. We did this before with Gorski. Oh, speaking of which, we should go back to Gorski and see about that merchant he supposedly has. I wouldn't mind having more traps with us for the area we're about to do, but it's too late now. Actually, it may not be too late, but we're going to pretend it is. That the place is indeed under attack and we need to get there immediately by then doubling back for our barrels. Sorry, everyone. I had a really rough evening last night. I think we can do this part, and then we'll call the session. And I think this... Yep, this door's now open. This is where we're supposed to go. Oh my god. Wow. In case it comes to a battle, I'm going to go ahead and set a few traps down here first to start. I like this fighting area. Feels like an arena to me of some sort. We have two more traps. We'll place them. Actually, we have three more traps, Tim. Go 
put one more down another corridor. Maybe put that one here. Actually, no. Let's... Uh... We'll hold on to our last trap. Agent Garrett, I'm Agent Julia Henderson. We don't have much time to talk. We arrived here right before you did and found all security systems offline, including all ceiling turrets. This appears to be a well-planned and well-executed attack. Luckily, the attackers are not defaceless, but whoever is behind this is very well organized and equipped. Prepare yourself, Agent. There will definitely be more of them coming. We're as ready as we're going to be. And I think they will be showing up in a few more seconds. Oop, I, th I thought I just saw... Yep, there they are. We'll switch the course over here. Must take all the stuff now, I suppose. We'll switch this junk. Someone used a shield. That movement penalty is so massive, Tim. They can see your traps as well, and they are avoiding them. I don't think this guy can reach me, unless did he use adrenaline? He did. Maybe he can reach us. Let's use... Let's, let's move up instead, and we'll use our candy dodge. Oh, they have laser pistols. And they suck at using them, apparently. Nice work, Garrett. Just barely killed him. Oh, we're, go we're moving out? Careful of my traps, everyone. Nicely done. And we picked up a stealth enemy as well. Let's use our shield, switch to our crossbow. We're not hitting that guy. Anderson isn't very good. Ooh, glad that missed us. That Cortex Rudder's shield is still holding. Thank goodness. I hear more enemies up ahead somewhere as well.
Hello, mercenary. Oh, God. Oh, nice. Oh crap, that grenade hit Cortex security. We have to reload now, that freaking sucks. Sorry everyone, I hate when this happens. Okay everyone, the battle's about to start. Let's redo this. The only thing I think of is that maybe I, maybe, I thought the grenade went a little awry, but maybe it actually landed at the exact spot I wanted it to land at, in which case the game considers that as attacking the Cortex personnel. Good hits. Let's try to move away as fast as we can now. Battle, battle starting. Nice. Good work, Garrett. Two down. More than being trapped and damaged on the way to us. That's fantastic. Wow. Combat even ended. That's how well we did. Though it's not over yet. Yep. All those traps are really adding. Oh, really adding up. Crap. Oh, they don't even see me. They see other people instead. The gentleman back there. Guys, you can do it. Let's keep him incapacitated. We're in the corner a bit to keep ourselves protected. Since I think that our friends can do more damage to him. Sounds like another one's dead. This is bad. There's a lot of them. Wow. There are indeed a good many of them. We can't incapacitate him. I think we'll move back a bit. Let's go ahead and use an adrenal gland. Oh, actually, we've only, I only see three. We might be okay.
Okay, there's actually still quite a few of them left. I was hoping you guys would actually kill the one with the sledgehammer, since he was almost dead right next to you. I think we can. Let's use an adrenaline. Why not? We'll give ourselves more action points. That's what I want to do. I just want to incapacitate him. Someone else can deal with him, or that hit will kill him, or at least leave it, he'll be out of combat the rest of this, this fight. Nice! Good work, sir. Becoming a true hero over there. Oh my god! Something's tearing you guys up now, though. Their leader is. Darn it! He has ten hit points left. That sucks. We just barely couldn't do it. This means we're not earning, we're not earning any experience points for these deaths as well, because of these kills. Because other people are getting the killing shot. Oh, nice. And now I see I'm not red and aggroed onto the Cortex Runner. I'm also going to be incapacitated, I think, for two turns. But it looks like they have this. Well done, guys. Everyone lived as well. Awesome. Well done. That could have gone so much worse. And now we have a bunch of corpses to loot. So, why don't I do this off-screen, everyone, and I'll be back. Okay, everyone. All this stuff has been taken from the corpses. And we are now ready to continue our heroic adventure. Let's head back to Joseph and let him know that the warehouse is defended. Actually, first, let's talk to the survivors and see if they have anything to tell us. I'm very glad everyone lived. All the Cortec personnel survived. Thanks for the help, Garrett. Ooh, that was close. I think that's all of them. Well done. I'll stay here and keep watch. Uh, and you inform Harlan what happened here. Got it? Understood. No one messes with us and lives to tell the tale. Right, Agent Garrett? Correct, sir. Well done, Cortec. Oh my goodness, that was a fun fight, wasn't it? All of our traps ended up getting used. I even remembered to use the acid trap this time around. And uh, it was worth an okay amount of loot for us, if you look, think of that. We're leaving with an okay suit of armor, an okay helmet. This, when we paired, would be worth quite a bit of cash. And that's about it, honestly. Some bullets as well, I suppose. And, of course, the experience for having completed that. Very nice. And, if I recall correctly, we were about to be offered our player housing upon the completion of this quest, which I am very much looking forward to, because you will see me dump about 18,000 Charons into that place. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll probably do that next episode. Probably do that next episode. And then, there'll be about an hour's worth of time off-screen of me moving everything into the place. Alright, um, what are we doing? We're going back upstairs. And we're going to go first to the merchants. I don't think the merchants have recycled their inventory of items, but we're going to check. Heads up everyone as well that between this part and the 
Well, what happened uh, during the fight? It's been a day. This is now the next day for me. I'm recording, having been completely rested. It's been a much better day today than yesterday. Holy crap. That said, we can only still fit like another 10, maybe 12, uh, 20 minutes tops into this uh, video before we're, before we're budgeted for time. Oh, going the wrong way. We have an energy weapon, and we should sell that to the energy guy. We also have a shield, which is not as good as the shield we got from Baylor. Or Balor, so we should sell that. So let's do it. Hello, Halim. Welcome back. Show me what you have. Okay, so he will buy the energy weapon. What else will he buy? Oh, I don't actually have the, the power core with me. Oh, well, let's go ahead and, and vendor this to him. And we'll get all 300 of his dollars. We will also have room to buy something from him. It's at this point... Actually, we should just buy more microfibers for more uh, shock bolts. And since he's selling MK3 shock bolts, those those will save me a bit. I won't have to buy them myself. Can I maybe buy a single... One of these? Yes, we can. Let's trade for all this stuff. And then we'll see if everyone else has anything they want to trade. Though I don't think they've probably recycled their inventory this this quickly. They have not. Garcia, though, may have money for... Yes, money for bullets, and she does. Thank you, Garcia. All right. Well, the stuff we're not going to use can be stored at the moment. And we're not going to make more bolts quite yet, so we can store those. All right, let's keep adventuring. So let's go to her and talk to Mr. Harlan. And see what he has as a reward for us, and any other possible missions. Once we get to player housing, by the way, assuming that this is going to happen, we will spend a lot of money on it. And then, I'm thinking... We're going to go and complete the Free Drones quest next. Alternatively, we might also slip in some more of the gladiatorial combat. Uh, though both of those will happen next episode. And what level are we? We're 22. Okay. Alright, let's go to Cortec. I moved my microphone just a bit. I think we picked all these people's pockets already. We also do want to go and revisit Percival and talk to him about the... Sorry, uh, witness one of the meetings for the Chortists. Why not? Might as well learn a bit, a little bit more about them since they're all over Core City. Garrett, it is a pleasure to see you as always. The warehouse has been secured. Harlan smiles. Garrett... Agent Henderson already reported back. You did a good... You did a great job there. I was really worried it was the Faceless attacking us, I can say. You delivered yet again, Garrett. You'd never disappoint. Take this. He hands you 500 charons on the tactical vest. I have nothing for you at the moment, but you will be called when you are needed. He smiles. Alright, I have to go now. Take care, then. Let's talk to him again really quick. Alright, so we don't have another quest. Alright, that sucks. Thought we were going to get our player housing. Guess that happens later. Alright, so I think then we have to climb up the gladiatorial arena a little bit to get more work from those people. Well, let's take a look at our quests. Actually, let's take a look at the armor we got first. Oh, hey! This is somewhat similar to the armor we currently have. But the armor penalty is massive. And I have no clue why. <laughs> why is our penalty 65 for this? 24 and 19. Oh, it's all the mechanical damage reduction is what it is. It's a lower level pseudo armor than what it is than what we have. And it's more suited to blocking bullets. It, but that's no good for us. We can't afford that high armor penalty. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Well, it doesn't matter, I suppose. Let's go back to the merchant, drop the armor off, then we'll take a look at our quest and see what we're going to do next. 
I guess we can slip in in another arena battle while we're here. So we'll try, we'll try that against this archer. Right, they use a crossbow bolt and they, have, they use poison bolts as well. Alright, so Arena now is right next door to this place. Let's first drop off that armor. We don't need it. There you go. We'll also put back our gas mask. Oh, we did already? Did I do that already? I did. Okay, good. Oh, uh, we won't... Ah, it doesn't matter, Tim. Hold on to the detection mask. Hold on. What's this? We don't need that either. Let's get stored. Now, this is the arena. So I should go all out with my equipment in the arena. That means we want our MK3 shock bolts with us. And, I'm oh, sorry, we want them ready to be used. And I think instead of the serrated bolts, we'll grab some flashbangs. I mean, it's no joke. We definitely want to win every single battle that we... Well, if we don't win, we're dead. So, and <clears throat> because the arena faces... Uh, it's basically like NPC... Um, sorry, player versus player combat. I just I view it like that, even though it's not against another player. But uh, it's against very tailored, combat-oriented characters. <clears throat> And as such, we need to prepare ourselves with the best equipment we can possibly arm ourselves with for these battles. And that means eating food before I step in there. So before I forget to do that, let's have our initiative increasing. Drink. Quick save. All right, let's do it. Hey, Garrett. Ready to kill some more? I'm ready for the next match. You're up against Bullseye. You take him out, and you get to become a real gladiator. Oh, and you're gonna... Uh, and you're on prime time now. Make sure to, uh, I don't know, entertain the crowd. Start the match. Holy crap, we're being recorded. Darn it, and I should have activated my shield before I began this. Welcome back, you bloodthirsty uh, viewers. As you just seen, Disembolia did a dominating job dealing with those two poor challengers. Disembolina. Beautiful carnage. Beautiful. But now we're about to see our good old Bullseye fight one of our young bloodthirsty challengers. Let's hear it for... Garrett! Let's go! Give us a bloodbath! If we fail the initiative, we're dead. That's what this comes down to. We'll be netted and just killed. We win. Alright, good. First, let's try stunning him with a flash grenade. Net him, so he can't get away. Charge! And we will go ahead... Oh! I'm not going to use the Adrenal Glance quite yet. Activate our shield. I should have thrown the net this round, not, not last round. It's too late now. Let's move up and gut him. I'm going to leave him incapacitated this round. And now we'll kill him. And we have the action points to search his corpse. Awesome! We'll take all of it! Ah, oh, yes! Ah, oh, yes! Wonderful. And I feel really bad because we, he didn't even get a chance to act. But we're taking it. Dominating! This was unbelievable! Bull Bullseye was just defeated! But what is this? The crowd is chanting, I, I can't quite... Super Bomberman! The crowd is chanting Super Bomberman! Unbelievable! A bright future is awaiting our young child... Gladiator, that is! 
That's it for now, bloodthirsty maniacs. See you next time. The crowd has named us Super Bomberman. Probably because of all the grenades we've been throwing. Would be my guess. You get a name depending upon what you've used to help you win the, the combat. And because I guess we've mixed it up with our bow and our dagger, and we've thrown lots and lots of grenades and killed lots of the beasts with it, we've also used it against both the gladiators, throwing uh, flashbangs and normal grenades. We're Bomberman. You half-wit! <laughs> I can't believe it! You sure know how to entertain the crowd! They all yelled Super Bomberman! Do you know how rare it is for a challenger to be so loved by the audience during his first fight with a gladiator? Do you? I don't really care, that was awesome! Listen to me carefully. You gotta keep this thing going. You're a gladiator now. The crowd loves you. And don't you dare pull out now when you got the heads rolling. You hear me, half-wit? Some people would kill to get a place where, um, yeah. Here's your money. And it's gonna get better and better from now on. Hands you 300 Stygian coins. Alright. See you later, Lennon stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. Good for you, Garrett. Holy flipping crap. How's the dagger holding up? The dagger's fine. Alright, not bad. Oh, and the stuff. Look at the stuff in a few minutes, everyone. Garrett, fierce as always. What can you tell me about no what can you tell me about my next opponent, Gary? Do you know? My next opponent is gonna be Master Exploder, a mute pyromaniac. Little is known about him or his past. Well, other than the fact he enjoys burning and blowing his opponents into many, many pieces. He himself wears a fire resistant suit, naturally, so keep that in mind. Use cover, and take him out as fast, or you'll be nothing but ashes after he's done with you. Good luck. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Gary. Thanks. Alright. We, I believe I have kept a fire suit for this, if I really want to equip it. The fire suit, though, I believe it has a big armor penalty on it. Let's take a quick peek. Uh, oh, I'm assuming, of course, I have it with me. Which I might not actually have it here. It might be instead at Southgate Station. And it looks like that is indeed the case. Crap! Alright. We'll take a look at it together next episode then, everyone. Let's take a look at the gear we picked up. And then we'll be good to go. So, we gained... Some Burr Poison Bolts. 15 of them now. Uh, we can probably take off our MK3 shock bolts and equip our MK1s. Five crawler poison bolts. That's awesome. Some cavier poison as well. We no longer need to have that on by default. And I think we'll also drop a few grenades. We don't need all that many of them. We gained a crap ton of bolts. We don't need so many since we're using these normal bolts more often now. He had... Uh, tabby boots, which are not as good as ours. That's kind of a shame. I was hoping he would have some better boots than that. He had a utility belt. His armor is decent, but we have better. Actually, it's... No, never mind. It's super low level. But it is worth a fair bit. Can we repair that? Yeah, that's a decent amount of money to be sold. His goggles were perception plus one. That's useless. He had a shield. The shield is not as good as what we're, we currently have. And his crossbow is also not as good as what we have either. Okay. Ah, darn it. Well, it's still, it's worth a, bu a bunch of cash. So, shouldn't complain too much about that. All right. Let's take a look really quick at our quests. Just so I understand what we're doing next episode. And then we'll probably, well, plan on it. So, let's see. Okay. We've got to... Go to Foundry to do a quest. We have the Arena to do. More of that if we care to. We have the Free Drones mission. Still have to find the Acid Hunters, which we won't be able to do for some time at the moment. We still need to drop off the fish at Junkyard. I can do that off screen though. We're done with Camp Hawthorne. I think we're basically done with everything else. Okay, and we also have some more exploring we could do instead, but I'm thinking we 
I think we'll probably just do more Arena, because I'm pretty sure that unlocks the next quest for us to do from Cortec. And also, I think we will earn the ability, uh, this ability, the option, or the privilege, there we go, of earning our home. I can't wait for that. Alright, everyone, I'm beginning to babble. Thank you all for watching, and I will see everyone in the next one. Take care, everyone.